everybody, my name is Tiffany Chang Lawson and I am the Executive Director for the Governor's Advisory Commission on Asian American Affairs. We act as the advocate agency in state government for our Asian American communities throughout the Commonwealth mm -hmm. of Pennsylvania. So I had the opportunity to um, be introduced to Lan a couple weeks ago and we've prepared a greeting for Master Xiao from the Governor. So I'm going to just read that for you today. Greetings, it is my pleasure to welcome all those gathered in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for the two-day Paida Latin workshop hosted by Master Hong Chi Xia. During your stay in Harrisburg, I hope you will have the opportunity to view the vast resources and natural beauty of central Pennsylvania. I am sure that you will soon learn that there are truly memorable, memorable ways to see and experience this area. As you travel our scenic highways and byways, you will discover the qualities that make this region such an enriching place to visit and the goodness of our people, the richness of its historical significance and our geographic diversity. Given the area's natural beauty and cultural vibrancy, I am confident that you will create many lasting memories while you are here. As governor on behalf of all Pennsylvanians, I am pleased to welcome everyone gathered here today for the workshop. Please accept my best wishes for an enjoyable visit to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Governor Tom Corbett, thank you all so much. <laughs> okay, the topic is simple, called self-healing, so I have to make it very clear, this is not a medical therapy. It is very, very simple, extremely simple method everybody can use without a license to not only heal you, but also do the diagnosis. Uh, it is called Pai Da, La Jin. Pai Da means slapping, very easy. La Jin means stretch. You just lie down the bench like this, lift up one leg, then you begin the job. How do I start with this? How did I start with this? I was educated in the United States in a business school. So I started from Wall Street. I worked in the big building, <laughs> World Trade Center for a couple of years and Hong Kong for over 10 years. It's all about investment, which has nothing to do with this kind of healing stuff. But at the age of 40, I quit from the finance area and I started my journey in search of healing. At the beginning, it's still not quite a lot to do with the healing. I wrote a book because I was interested in culture. So I said, okay, it's always be better to begin without relying on something else. So I wrote a fiction book it's about investment banking. The name is called Sex and the Stocks. <laughs> it's a very sexy book, okay, it's a fiction. That's published in both Made in China and Taiwan. And after that, I got involved with the designing for the opening ceremony of Beijing Olympic Games. Teamed up with An Li, our famous director yeah, here in the United States. And after that, I began to write a book about traditional Chinese medicine, but it's also a fiction book. Because in China, I think in the whole world, it's very hard for normal people to read the book about medicine. But if it's a story, it's a fiction, it's much easier for people to read, especially for the Chinese. See, the most Chinese Kung Fu book writer is called Jin Yong, but he's not a real Kung Fu guy, yet he wrote a lot of books. Millions of Chinese are fascinated by spoke. So I think this might be a better way to promote the natural way of healing. But in my journey in search of the healers in order to write the book, those healers encouraged me to learn this kind of stuff. So at the beginning, what I learned is not Pai Da La Jin, it's acupressure. 
you just use your fingers to press on echo points. And the first teacher I met, very funny, he is not a medical doctor, of course. In fact, most of the great healers I met in my life, they are not doctors. They don't have a medical background. And this healer with acupressure, he is a fisherman. But when I visited his home, to my great surprise, I found so many people who were paralyzed, about 15 or so. They all began to walk, you know. Oh, they were walking. So the fisherman told me, now they're walking, but then we first came here, they couldn't walk. I said, how, how could I believe you? I would rather, with my own eyes, see how these people were carried here, you know, paralyzed, and then begin to walk after your treatment. He said, then you have to stay here and wait. Who knows? You have to wait for the new patients. So I say, okay. And I'd be more than happy to stay here. So I stayed in his house in day three, kind of at 9 p.m. something, very strong knock at the door. And, and this gentleman said, okay, here's what you want. I said, how do you know? <laughs> he said, here in the mountainous area, in the middle of nowhere, who would knock on my door at this time? So he opened the door, a lady, already unconscious, carried by her family members. And the fisherman asked him, asked them, how do you find here? They said, okay, he got a stroke, bleeding here in the brain, so she was carried to the hospital. After all this emergency treatment, the doctor said, well, sorry, you have to go back to prepare for the funeral. So with the last hope, they heard from some friends that this fisherman could do something, you know. So they brought her here. So, okay, this is my first time to see how the natural healing happens. So he just used his fingers because at that time the lady was totally unconscious, so blood bleeding in the eyes, <coughs> not even no more breathing. So check pressure, blood pressure is. 210, that's very high, right? So, after a few minutes, pressure on the head, body, feet, then the lady came to life, opened her eyes. I said, wow, this is like magical. And he said, okay, today's done. We're going to do more tomorrow morning. So next morning, again, it's about 10 to 15 minutes, just with fingers, you know, it's like, like a magician doing something. So, like 15 minutes later, the lady could sit up and could eat chicken legs. So I said, this is really, really, really interesting. So next day she was walking on the ground already. So it took about one week, so the lady went home. So it's like, job is done. I was still not sure whether it really worked or not. So next year, one year later, I visited that lady again. That lady was still very healthy, and she even cooked, cooked for us, and she played drum because the, uh, the, the disease or the, the, the heart attack or the stroke happened when she was dancing in the street. You know, in China, many retired people, old people, they dance and they play drums in the street. That's how it happened. So she took out the drum and played for us again. So that, I, I truly believe, at least it worked. But at that time, I still didn't have the interest to learn it. I just, I just do my field study then to write a book. But this gentleman said, you'd better stay here and learn something from me. I said, why? He said, you are from Beijing, you know, you are from you, you visit many different parts of the world. You'd better introduce some patients for me. Because I'm here in the middle of nowhere. No one even know what's going on here. So indeed, I introduced many patients to him. Some even from the United States, from Hong Kong, from many parts of the world. When I, when I visited that place for the third time, I did stay there. So I learned for one month acupressure. 
And one month later, exactly one month later, one gentleman came, also stroke. But this time it's not bleeding, it's kind of blockage, okay? So my teacher said, okay, this time it's your turn. Nobody is going to touch, it. touch him, you do the job. So I began to do echo pressure. So again, you know, in just three days, began to walk. In one more week, he walked home. So it's, it worked. Not only from him, I did, it worked. So that means it could be duplicated, okay? At this moment, another, my teacher, okay, he's a Buddhist monk, he said, okay, that's enough for you, you've got to learn something else. I said, to learn what? He said, acupuncture. Learn from whom? He said, I already got a teacher for you. Again, he's not a doctor, <laughs> he's an engineer. So I began to learn acupuncture from the engineer. He's happy too, because he wanted to learn acupuncture from me. So we could exchange our skills. But I didn't learn in the room like this. I learned it on the way, you see. We travel like vagabond everywhere. But mostly we live in the monasteries and temples. And along with us uh, was also a Taoist from Wudang San. That's a very famous Taoist mountain. This Taoist person is good at feng shui and fortune telling and that kind of stuff. So we three work together. I do acupressure, my teacher acupuncture, and then we got a Taoist who do who does the fortune telling. So it's very much like a Chinese kung fu fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so you travel a lot, then you meet different people, then you begin to do all the things to help people. <laughs>